Okay, today I'm going to be answering the question that has been posed a lot of times in the comments section. What is the speed of smell? And then I'm going to be showing you my very awesome smell cannon. I made a way that you can actually shoot <laughs> smell at somebody. And I'd like to thank Wix for sponsoring this video. So Wix is a free platform that allows you to build highly customizable, professional and robust websites. So Wix offers hundreds of templates and unlimited pages and top grade hosting for free. And then you can upgrade to one of their premium plans for as little as $5 a month to get even more. So the website I built is called theactionlabhome.com. So this is a site that I built so that you can learn a little bit more about me. So I talk a little bit about my history in chemical engineering, my PhD, you can even read my dissertation if you want, and my subscription box that I'm working on, and a few other projects like my books that I'm writing. So when making this site, I was very impressed by how creative I could be with the website, and also how professional it turned out in the end. You can see with the Wix editor, you can easily move things around, change anything you want, and customize it any way you want. I was very impressed with Wix, and I'm going to continue to use it to develop my website on here. So go check out Wix and support the Action Lab by going to wix.com go slash action lab, or click the link in my description to take you there. Depending on what you already know, you might be surprised to learn that smell is actual molecules moving through the air. So that when you smell something, it's a molecule that came from the object, moved through the room, and then attached to the olfactory nerves in your nose, and then you smell it. And I remember learning this fact when I was younger, and then moving to the next disgusting realization, that when people fart, you're actually smelling molecules that came from the person that farted. So that means a smell is actually composed of tiny little droplets of the thing that is emitting the smell, and also molecules that are smelly, like methyl sulfides and hydrogen sulfides. So how fast can these smells move? Well, we know that the droplets are very big compared to gas molecules. A droplet moving through the air would look something like this. So this is a simulation of Brownian motion. Whereas for the methyl and hydrogen sulfides, those are much smaller, but they're still rather large molecules compared to air molecules. So it would be like releasing a bunch of larger balls among a bunch of smaller balls all bouncing around. So this movement happens simply due to the random motion of the gas molecules all bumping into each other. And this is called diffusion. So the speed of diffusion is actually very, very slow compared to other speeds. For example, you may have heard it said that a shark can sense a drop of blood in the water a mile away. But let's say a drop of water were put a mile away and it had to just diffuse through the water in order to get to the shark so it could even have a chance of smelling it. Well, if the blood had to get there purely through diffusion, for a mile away, it would take 40 million years. <laughs> So definitely not happen in anybody's lifetime. So how would a shark even sense any blood in the water ever if it diffuses that slow? Well, the answer is that diffusion is not the only mechanism to spread smell through a medium. The much faster method is called convection. For example, here's some water and I'm going to put some red food coloring in here. We can pretend this is blood. Let's say I put this at the very bottom here. Very slowly remove it. Okay, so you can see it's just sitting on the bottom there. So diffusion is occurring. These red dye molecules are actually mixing with the water molecules. They're diffusing through it. But you can see it's not a very fast process. It looks like it's just sitting there. So you can imagine how long it would take to even get to the top of the water or even across the bowl. So convection doesn't rely on just the diffusion of, of one type of molecule through another type, but it actually depends on the mechanical movement of the fluid. So convection basically just means stirring. So this is convection. You can see just like that, almost instantly, the red dye has now mixed with the entire bowl here. So whenever you smell something, it has always gotten to your nose by a mixture of diffusion and convection, but mostly convection. So if you're going to ask what the speed of smell is, it's basically how fast you can move one fluid through another. You see, but the problem with spreading smell with convection is that convection tends to spread it out and disperse the fluid that is moving. And so eventually you get a very low concentration of that initial strong smell. 
But what if there was a way to move a smell through the air without dispersing it and lowering the concentration? So what if you were able to shoot a smell across the room and hit another person with it with just a high of concentration as if they were standing right next to you? Is that possible? And one way to do that is to create what's called a vortex ring. So a vortex ring happens when you have a fluid moving and it hits a barrier that has a smaller opening in it and then that fluid hits it and because that smaller opening causes friction, it causes the fluid to come out but it drags along the edges so it causes it to start turning. And it turns in kind of a toroid shape. And as it comes out, the fluid is spinning like that and because it's spinning, it actually creates less friction with the air around it. Similar to how a ball rolling is easier to move than a ball sliding across the floor. And so because this toroid is spinning, it moves through the air losing very little energy and it can move very far distances that way. So let's see if we can get that to happen with air. You might have seen one of these before. There's been a lot of YouTube channels that have made these before, but today I wanna to see if I can actually shoot smell with this. So let me show you how this works. I'll shoot first some smoke through it so we can see if it's actually working, and then I'll try it with smell. So now watch how far we can actually get this to shoot. Fill it up with smoke. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> okay, so you can see that the Vortex Cannon worked perfectly. So you can see the smoke ring can travel for great distances and stay on in a really high concentration as it moves. So the question is now, could you use that same vortex ring to actually shoot smell? Well, I'm gonna test it out today. Okay, so I have a very fresh poopy diaper here that I'm going to be placing in my vortex cannon and my wife's going to be shooting it at me and I'm gonna see if I can smell it even from a very long distance away. Okay, first we're gonna start, this is about three meters away. Oh, <laughs> okay, I definitely smell that. <laughs> it's more of a reaction of a bunch of air hitting you, but uh, you have to kind of try to smell it because it's a lot of air hitting you at once. Let's see how it is further away. Okay, so, so far the shooter is getting the worst of the smell <laughs> because she's by the poopy diaper and she can't hit me with it, so. <laughs> oh, that hit me. I didn't smell anything though. Oh, that hit my face. Okay, I smelled that. So, on the ones that went right by me, I didn't smell anything, which is pretty interesting. That means the toroid actually kept the smell right in it and took it past me. But when it hit me in the face, it kind of bursts it, and so that's when I can actually smell it. Okay, so does the smell cannon work? The answer is yes, it does. It's hard to aim because you can't see what's coming out of it, but it does work, but it has to kind of hit you right in the face or right on your body. It has to burst that spinning vortex ring. If it doesn't burst it, then it just goes right past you and you don't smell anything. So what is the speed of smell? Well, it's actually whatever speed you want it to be. These vortex rings can actually move pretty fast. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And if you haven't checked out theactionlab.com, go check it out right now. And you can check out my subscription box where you can do experiments similar to the ones you see me do on my channel. And thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.